ಸುಮಿತ್ರಪವೋಷಧಯ ಸುರ್ಮಿತ್ರ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭೂಯಸೂರ್ಯಸ್ಮೇಷ್ಟಿ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಮಂತ್ರಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸೀಡ್ ದಿ ಅಘಮರ್ಷಣ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಋಷಿ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅಬ್ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ದ ಡೀಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಅವರ್ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ who do not like us who are giving us a lot of trouble in life you should become their enemies prevent them from harming us then in the next mantra aposhishtha mayo bhuvah tana urje dadhatana mahiranaya chakshase yo vashivatamo rasah tasya bhajayate hanah ushati riva matarah ತಸ್ಮ ಅರಂಗಮಾಮವೋ ಯಕ್ಷಯ ಜಿನ್ವತ ಆಪೋ ಜನ ಯಥಾಚನ ದಿಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಋಷಿ ಈಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅಬ್ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ದಿ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಡೀಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕೇಪಬಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ಫರಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ joy peace happiness upon us we beg you we request you to give us food food is a primary necessity of life once the body is nourished with food we will be able to do sadhana in a better way and through the sadhana we will be able to purify our minds and then lift up our minds to higher levels of spiritual experience mahiranaya chakshase you also please give us insight into that great beautiful being god is great god is beautiful god is the very personification of all that is great and good and beautiful and we would like to have a vision of that lord and you are capable of giving us that vision therefore we pray to you give us that intuitive insight that mystic experience with the help of which we will be able to see the supreme lord yova shivatamura satas rasah tasya bhajayate hanah ushati riva matarah now there is rasa in you rasa in the ordinary sense means relish what is behind taste in all the things that are edible that we eat and enjoy there is something which makes that food tasty and that element is called rasa unless there is rasa no food article can be tasty can be acceptable to us palatable to us so that rasa is actually a one of the aspects of the supreme god who is raso vaisaha who is ananda who is bliss raso hamapsukaunte ya the lord says in the gita the element of rasa the quality of rasa the most important characteristic of water which is called rasa i am that and rasa also stands for joy bliss so here the rishi is asking him now there is that rasa in you you are the lord the possessor the owner of that rasa you please make us sharers of that rasa at the ordinary level you give us tasty food but at a higher level you give us that blissful experience how he gives a simile ushati eva mataraha now there are mothers in this world who feed their babies with love and affection nourish them and bring them up so just like that you also nourish us by giving this joy this happiness this bliss yasya kshaya jinvatha apojana yathachana 
this sentence has been interpreted by the commentators in two different ways. The first interpretation is, now you are capable of destroying our sins, making our minds pure, capable of raising our minds to higher levels of spiritual experience. Therefore, we are approaching you very quickly so that your grace falls upon us. Arangamama. We will approach you very quickly. Bahadavega nimmana balisarthebe. Nimmanu grahadinda namma papadigulu nashtavagi manasu shuddhavagi ananda rasa embatakanthadana navu hundu vante agali. Secondly, Yasya Kshayaya, the word Kshaya is interpreted as the residence of Rasa. Now we have the Abdevatas here. The deity is presiding over the element of water. And the most important characteristic of water is Rasa taste. But there are, there is vegetation. There are plants, there are trees giving us leaves, fruits and other products which are edible. We grow them, we take care of them and then we take them, cook them and eat them. So you, because of your special grace, this vegetation, plant life, plants and trees, they have been able to imbibe or get that special quality by which they are, they have become edible to us. They have become or capable of becoming food to us. Therefore, we pray to you. <coughs> we have made them fit for, fit to be our food. But we also pray to you to make us fit to consume that and digest it and get nourishment. Both are equally important. It's not enough if the food is good. Our body must be capable of digesting that food, get the best out of that and it should be assimilated into the system so that the human system works, works better and it helps us in our sadhana. So the second interpretation is praying to the Abdevatas, the deities presiding over water, to give us the capacity, the power to digest this food properly. Sometimes it may appear to us that the Vedic Rishis are praying for very ordinary things of life. It's not that. First of all, life is one unit. We must take a holistic view of life. Ishavasya midam sarva. In that Ishavasya Upanishad, Drishi has said, we should desire to live for 100 years. We should continue to perform our duties, discharge our responsibilities. It's part of our life. Life is one unit, we cannot cut it up into several parts. So, unless the environment is good, unless our body is healthy and strong, unless the living conditions are good, we will not be able to achieve anything in life, either at the ordinary level or at the spiritual level. So we find that in the Vedic literature, whether it is the Rig Veda or even in the Upanishad, such prayers are also interspersed in between. Now we come to the very first mantra of the Agamarshana Sukta. Hiranya Shringam Varunam Prapadye Tirtham Me Dehi Achitaha Yanmaya Bhuktam Asadhunam Papebhyascha Pratigraha Hiranya Shringam Varunam Prapadye I take refuge in Varuna who has got a golden crown. Sattvam Tirtham Me Dehi You give me Tirtha Because whatever has been eaten, the food that has been accepted by me and eaten, food that has been given to me by the sinners, and the gifts that I have accepted from sinners have put me into obligation. They have made my mind impure and I want you to make me pure because of, uh, I'm, because I am taking bath in this river or water by praying to you. Actually this is a mantra. 
a holy formula used before taking bath either in a tank or a river and at the place where the bath has to be taken first this mantra is chanted and then bath is taken now varuna to whom this prayer is addressed is a very important deity in the vedas especially in the rig veda indra mitra varuna they are almost equally important in fact varuna is even more important than mitra almost equal to indra in the vedic literature later on in course of time he lost that supremacy and became just the deity of the western quarter the devata of the west but in the vedas we find that he is paramatman himself he presides over the element of water he has his own wonderful beautiful world varuna loka it is which is supremely beautiful and capable of giving us great joy and happiness and varuna is also an extremely compassionate god but he is also responsible for ruta keeping order in this universe so there is a cosmic order cosmic law according to which the universe is working the sun rises in the east and sets in the west then the rivers are flowing towards the ocean such descriptions are given in the upanishads so he who is responsible for keeping order in this universe and see that the created universe is working smoothly so that all the living beings here get the best out of it that supreme lord is varuna he has got a varuna pasha pasha indicates the power to bind people pull them and punish them if they transgress this law so he is the lord of ruta lord of dharma he rewards people who act according to dharma and punishes those who transgress ruta or dharma in other words we can say that he is paramatman supreme lord supreme god himself and he is described as hiranya shringa hiranya is gold shringa actually means a cap or the crown we can say here it is the crown it's the peak of a mountain here we can interpret it as the crown golden crown so he is wearing the golden crown in fact in the chandogya upanishad the upanishad purusha the supreme being the god of the upanishads he is described as hiranyashmashruhu hiranyakeshaha apranakhat suvarna he has got golden hair golden mustache and golden nails the whole person is gold golden doesn't mean he is made up of uh, gold the metal but it simply means he is bright ujjwala koti surya samaprabha this is an expression used in many of these stotras to describe the lord so this varuna who is the supreme lord the ruler of this universe the keeper of the eternal law ruta he is wearing a beautiful golden crown now we are praying to him teertham me dehi avatarana sthanam dehi tarakam punyam dehi <coughs> today we take bath in our bathrooms taking the pouring the water from the bucket or probably from the shower but according to the scriptures a bath has to be taken in a river or in a pond or a tank so there the person who takes bath is expected to get the reap the full benefits of the bath only if he plunges himself into it avagahana is practically dipping himself into the water completely so that water is above the head then only it becomes a real snana for that they choose a particular place 
a convenient place let us say in the river it may be a snana ghatta or in a tank also a particular place where the person finds it is convenient to take bath after having chosen that place he has to chant this mantra so the water wherein i have entered wherein i want to take bath this water must become pure this water must become like a teertha a holy river so that my bath in it will be destroying not only the impurities of the body but also the impurities of the mind making me fit for spiritual life with that idea the mantra is chanted so this water let it become pavitra teertha holy water let it become capable of destroying my sin so after chanting this mantra the what he has to dip himself in and take the bath but if if a person is not in a position to take bath to be any reason especially in the illness the scriptures permit that he can take water in the hand recite this mantra sprinkle it upon himself it is as good as a bath it is practically a mantra snana that also is permitted and the same mantra hiranyashriga is used for that purpose also well he is now praying to varuna to free himself from the sins which are the sins two sins are mentioned here one is yan maya bhuktam asadhuna the second one pape bhyascha pratigraha it's quite likely that i have accepted and taken food from the sinners from evil persons not knowing maybe knowingly maybe unknowingly whether you do it knowingly or unknowingly the sin will definitely stick to you to your mind to your psychic personality how to get rid of it only by the grace of god bhuktam asadhu naam there is a belief that if we accept the food of sinners a part of their sin comes to us to that extent they will be freed to that extent we will be tainted that is why annadana is supposed to be very 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 holy and people are eager to do annadana and annadana is one of the um, prized chittas prescribed for sinners secondly parigraha now a brahmana especially is permitted to both pratigraha accepting gifts and also giving dana a part of his life again a brahmana is not a jati brahmana but a brahmana is one who is leading a strict spiritual life according to the dictates of the scriptures he has studied the vedas he is trying to implement the teachings of the vedas in his life the aim of the end and the aim of his life is parama purushartha and his main duty in the society is acquisition of spiritual knowledge and distribution of that spiritual knowledge to others so naturally people who are expected to be the spiritual teachers of the society had to lead a life of the highest ethical and moral standards so suppose by chance this person has taken food from somebody and doesn't know whether that person was really pure or not i may or may not know but by touch by keeping my hand in fire i get burnt something like that so he is praying to varuna please get rid of or destroy this sin which one might have accrued to me because of my accepting food from people who are sinners similarly pape bhya pratigraha swikrta maybe that i have accepted sometimes gifts not knowing that the persons who have given me the gifts are not very pure 
because of this possibility our ancients especially those who are very very orthodox and strict they used to observe aparigraha vrata and swayam pakaniyama they would cook their food themselves they would not accept any food from anybody and not accepting gifts from others unless it is absolutely necessary for sustaining one's life then that becomes apadharma shri ramkrishna's father was like that very strict and would never accept gifts from other people incidentally we can just dilate a little and see what the dharma shastra say regarding the giving or accepting of gifts who are the persons from whom gifts dana can be taken who are the persons from whom gifts are dana must not be accepted so one of the smritis puts it this way apaparogi dharmatma ditsuhu avyasana shuchihi अनिंद्या जीव कर्माच षड्भिर्दाता प्रशस्यते ए गिवर मस्ट बी ए गिवर विल बी प्रेज्ड और इज कंसीडर्ड एज प्योर ग्रेट होली इफ दीज क्वालिटीज आर देयर इफ दे आर नॉट देयर दे आर नॉट फिट टू गिव दाना एंड इफ दे गिव यू शुड नेवर एक्सेप्ट first is apapa he must be sinless of course in our life many times we cannot absolutely avoid committing sins knowingly or unknowingly but consciously if we lead a life of purity and if sometimes we slip from the path of purity we can purify ourselves through prayer chitta through prayer and all that one should never consciously commit sin and then not repent for it that is the idea here a person who is sinless then rogi suppose there is a person suffering from incurable diseases if he accept any gift finished part of that roga may come to us he may become a little better of course we wish him well but that doesn't mean that we should get that disease ourselves so this is also very important that if there are people suffering from incurable diseases we should not accept any gifts from them third dharmaatma a person who is reading leading a righteous life he knows the do's and don'ts in life he knows the moral and ethical principles according to that he is trying to guide his personal life suppose he is not he is doing a dharma he has slipped from the path of dharma not fit for becoming a dani avyasana so there are people who are addicted to so many evil things in life vyasana is deep addiction there are certain things which are forbidden by the scriptures suppose the person is addicted to that for instance drinking let us say if a person is addicted to that then automatically he has lost the status of becoming a dani we should not accept anything from such people then shuchi he he must be clean and pure if he is not either in the personal life or in the social life or in the moral life then naturally we have to avoid such persons anindya jeeva karma ch this is also very important a person is earning money to maintain himself and his family but is he doing by the right means or by the wrong means nindyavada vrittigalinda jeevanavanna nadustha idane ye illi suppose the vritti the profession that she has adopted in life is evil is say it is ruining other people and then harming other people what we call as papa like the vyadha who later on became valmiki so if a person is leading such a life and if he has accumulated wealth 
if he wants to give it to others we should not accept so these are the six persons from whom we can accept gifts the opposite six persons from whom we should not accept any gifts in the fifth chapter of the chandogya upanishad there is a very interesting incident ashwapati kekaya is one of the kings great kings glorified in our upanishads equal to janaka maharaja in his personal life and uh, spiritual enlightenment once five brahmanas went to him they wanted to learn from him a particular knowledge wisdom which he had mastered and the ashwapati king ashwapati ke kaya welcomed them he wanted to offer them gifts but they hesitated naturally they didn't want to accept any gift from the king without fully knowing his nature his character immediately the king could sense it then he declared namesteno janapade na kadaryo na madhyapo na anahita agnihi na avidvan na swairi swairini kutaha proudly he is declaring in my country in my kingdom there is no thief in my country in my kingdom there is no miser there is no drunkard there is no one who has neglected the vedic fires there is no one who is an ignoramus and there are no people of loose character no adulterer adulteress so after declaring that he was ruling perfectly according to dharma and the people were also dharmic the brahmanas were convinced then they accepted the gifts from him 